Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Talking with E. I'm your host, Edith Thomas, and the fall season is here. With the weather changing, there's so many indoor activities we can dive into, like starting a great new book. Today, we welcome back award-winning author, France Charles. France, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank awesome, you for me here. awesome. So I think about two years ago in 2021 is when you first sat down with us. Yep. Yeah, it's time's <laughs> changing. It's coming quick and yeah. it's changing. But um, yeah, you sat down and we were discussing your debut published novel, The GCP, The First Resurrection. Yes. And ever since then, you've made appearances on television shows, international magazines, book events, and more. Yeah. How has life been since? It's been good. I, I've learned a lot it helped me become a better person even with writing new books and whatnot so i mean it, the the journey has just been great oh, that's awesome that's so tell me what has life been like ever since it's been great i've got to speak to different kids um in different areas in new jersey i've gotten to speak in nigeria i've spoken at different conferences in atlantic city it's just been really good Oh, wow, Nigeria. Yeah, that must yeah. have been an amazing trip. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so refresh our memory a little bit for those who can't remember. What was the first novel about? The first novel, the GCP, The First Resurrection, was about um, char three characters who had their own problems, mm -hmm. whether it's depression, suicide, identity. They were going through their own issues. Mm -hmm. And despite the issues, there was a call upon their lives to join the secret organization called the GCP mm -hmm. to battle the gods who are from a different universe. Okay. And just out of curiosity, is this now a series or are these books related at all? So it's in, it's in the same world. The, mm -hmm. the New Watchers of Dead Sea Scrolls actually, um, the this prequel mm -hmm. to it, so it just happens prior to uh, what happened in the GCP. Oh, okay. Now, when reading it, would you get that, or is it told to you that this is a prequel? So, when the characters, the good thing about it is they will get to see some of the characters from uh, the GCP that oh. they'll know. Like, okay, you know what? These characters are a little bit younger than what it was in the um. first book, so they'll get to know, like, okay, this has happens before the events of the GCP. Okay, pretty cool, okay. So we sit down today, as we're talking about it, we sit down today to discuss the second novel titled New Watchers, The Dead Sea Scrolls. Yeah. Okay, give us a little plot of this novel. So there's different characters in here, um, five friends who are from different kingdoms. Okay. And what happens is um, this evil mermaid, La Salande, wakes up and she comes in with her entire mermaid army to flood the earth okay. and make earth dark and void. Okay. Now, their friends, their friends together, they evacuate to a different portal which saves them and their kingdom. Now, everybody's in fear, but this time her and her friends, the main character, Selena Black, she goes with her friends to journey to the other world to find the Dead Sea Scroll, which gives the answers to save the world from the mermaids. Oh, wow. Yeah, so they go on a journey, and it's just, um, it shows a lot of that, you know, despite your age and how young you are, um, you can still make a difference. Yeah, this is definitely fantasy. I would say open your <laughs> imagination up when reading this yeah. one, because it, it, it sounds like it takes you there. Yeah. It definitely sounds like it takes you there. Well, what inspired you to write such a novel? What inspired me? Honestly, it was... Um, I remember watching cartoons when I was younger, Okay. and certain cartoons like um, Avatar, The Last Airbender, that um, inspired one of the inspirations behind it. Um, so I would say that would be one of my inspirations. Okay, okay. And then I remember one of the characters you just said, La Seren. Yeah. Is that Latin? Um, yes. It's okay. in the Afro-Latina community. Um, this series is more on the mythology uh, type of um, genre in that sense. and so. Um, we were, me and my agent decided to go on that route, mm -hmm. and I decided to do that. So, yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> Imagination, yeah. I'm telling you. Okay, so speaking of like fantasy and sci-fi, I would say this tale, pretty captivating tale, is targeted to young readers. So what exactly would you want them to take away from this book when reading this? That they can do what they want. Well, they can do whatever they put their mind into. Mm -hmm. That they shouldn't be bound by fear. And, you know, with the right friends, the right circle, um, they can take you far and they can help you. Awesome. So, yeah. 
And that's true to life. People should live by those very words. Yeah. So. <laughs> that's great. So we're going to continue. But first, let's take a quick break, guys, and make sure you don't go anywhere because France Charles is going to let us know a little bit more about his new second novel. We'll be right back. I don't think that many kids in my son's school even do it. He makes fun of his friend who vapes. He would never try it. She's in the soccer. She's on the honor roll. She's just not the type. No way. No way. No way. No way. My kid would never vape. Get your head out of the cloud. Today, nearly 8,000 kids will start vaping. Maybe even yours. Learn about the dangers at talkaboutvaping.org. Man, it's lonely. Like, going through life lonely. There is the therapeutic aspect of music, just expressing how you feel. I'm going to talk to Howie about his feelings, make it into a song. Hello everyone and welcome back. I'm Edith Thomas, your host for Talking With E. And if you weren't paying attention or if you missed it, I get to sit down with the amazing author, France Charles. France, we're doing good, we're rocking and rolling. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so before we left from break, we were talking about your first novel and you were touching a little bit on the second one. So before we even move on, I want to talk about the cover of the book. So the cover of your book is very detailed, very graphic. I know they'll be able to see it. Um, tell me, inspiration behind that. First off, did you draw this? <laughs> no, um, I actually had an artist from Spain. His name is Adrian. Wow. He, me and him worked on the cover. You know, one of the scenes that comes from the book is La Sang comes with her army and mm -hmm. it's like a tidal wave. Mm -hmm. And the New Marine Kingdom, that's where Selene is at. Um, they govern the ocean. They make sure that there's no evil sea creatures that rises. So they govern it. And so when she gets resurrected and comes back with her army, there's a tidal wave coming towards them and they all face her ready to battle. And so that was something that was significant. I wanted to put that on the, uh, on the cover. Definitely. I would just say your whole summary just speaks that on, yeah. <laughs> on the title. Is it Five Women? Yes. Okay. Yeah, it definitely speaks that. And you get, you get captivated a little bit just looking at La, La Sedin. Right? Yeah, Last yeah. And then the, the ladies ready to prepare for battle. Yeah. That's pretty magnificent. Not going to not going to hold you. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. I um, also thought about their attire. Mm -hmm. um, Selena, who's right in the center mm -hmm. of brown hair. She's wearing all black. She's supposed to be crowned the next queen. And so she has this responsibility. And then, you know, this right when she gets to a coronation, this happens. And so you see her, her friend Star, who's the redhead. Mm -hmm. um, you see Chantel, who's from um, the Nephilim Kingdom. Uh, she's the African-American um, girl right there at the far right. Mm -hmm. And then you have Miku, who's uh, Japanese. And Amina, who's, um, who has her own issues um, from the, uh, she's European as well. So, oh, wow. Yeah. So it's very diverse. I, the, I was just going to say, I love the diversity. Yeah, so it's very diverse, and they're all going with their own issue growing up, you know, being in, you know, being 13, 14, which are really pivotal ages in, in anybody's life, mm -hmm. no matter the gender, where they transform and grow and whatnot, so yeah. That's pretty cool. Oh, yeah. man, I'm going to have to pick up this book after this. <laughs> I'm going to have to dive right on in with uh, some hot cocoa. <laughs> so writing one novel is an accomplishment on its own. So yeah. now writing two, a second, is even an uh, even greater deal. What challenges do you think you faced while transitioning into writing the second story? Man, um... You know, what was really complicated, I, I, I think, was around December, I had COVID. And so around that time, I was working on the book and just like I had to take a second. Mm -hmm. And then um, I think I think around that time, I, it made me sit down to actually say, you know, even though I'm healing from COVID, let me let me really deep, deep dive into knowing about the marine life mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that um, that culture. And mm -hmm. So I, I took the time to learn about La Salaine and how I can apply it to the story and teach the kids about different cultures. And so mm -hmm. I did that. 
So there definitely had to be a lot of research done in order to yeah, write absolutely. this. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, <laughs> a lot of research. Uh, but, you know, the thing about life, it teaches you. Um, it's life and death. It teaches you a lot of things. Mm -hmm. uh, around that time, I, I lost my grandpa. I'm sorry. But um, it made me realize, like, you cherish the older people. You mm -hmm. cherish the people that came in this life before you. Mm -hmm. And so I, you know, one of the things I did was I made Selena lose her grandfather because, you know, I lost my grandfather and I wanted to connect to the audience who lost somebody. Mm -hmm. And so we, we teach about loss and, you know, getting up and don't let, you know, death stop you. And so she does just that. And so it teaches a lot about, you know, not giving up and not letting setbacks hold you down. That's amazing. There's yeah. just so much wisdom right now, just from the everyday things <laughs> that children can learn from this novel, yeah. from you speaking your truth on it as well. Yeah. I, I think that's pretty cool. Um, so you are now a proud graduate yeah. of William Patterson University, because yeah. I remember when you were here in 2021, you were freshly starting? Yeah, around the time. It was yeah. freshly starting, trying to finish off. Yes. Uh, um, how has completing your undergrad influenced or assisted in your writing skills? Ooh, I, it helped me with, like, and I'm, and I'm thinking back because finishing college was really a challenge. Mm -hmm. I was uh, I was working on this book, but also going to different events and trying to uh, finish school perfectly. Like, I wanted to finish strong. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so I went on the Dean's List my last semester, paid off my college tuition. Great. And that was just, uh, it wasn't easy, but I did it. And, learning about the industry and helped me like gear towards type of stories I want to put out there mm -hmm. to help you know not be outdated in the industry so mm -hmm. yeah speaking of being outdated so I, it's kind of referring back to our previous question did you ever feel that as though you were writing your second novel deep into it do you ever feel yourself um re-saying or redoing something that you already did in your first novel that you're now trying to avoid in your second yeah, I, I would say uh, something similar that was there was, like, for the first book was The Resurrection of the Gods, right? Mm -hmm. And for this book was Last Night of Eternity, but it was, it was the difference was someone tried to awaken her. And mm -hmm. so uh, that was something that was similar, but I, what I wanted to do was put different age group with this one mm -hmm. and different challenges mm -hmm. just to help people with different challenges yeah so yeah and people could find this book very relatable right yeah. reading it they could relate to um selena herself with yeah. whatever depression and challenges that she faced yeah okay um last time you were here i asked you what advice would you give an inspiring young author looking to write a book of their own what would you add now having a foot in the door I would see, I would add, uh, I would add that to authors or? To a young author trying to write his first, his or her first book. Take time. Yeah. Take your time. I think uh, it's a journey, not a race, not a quick race. It's a journey. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're going to find times that your book, you think it's done and you go to sleep and you wake up like, you know what? I want to change this. I want to put it like this. And so take your time. Yeah. And plotting and planning, not just writing, but planning. How long would you say this book took you? A year and a half. Year and a half. Yeah. And there's probably different versions that you sat up, right? Yeah. And scrap it, sing, bring it to your editor, publisher. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, and I know the first book. It, it, it took me longer. It took me eight years for the first book. Mm -hmm. uh, this one took was so much quicker because I guess with time, I, I learned and I kind of knew the similar the same world, mm -hmm. so it wasn't. Like I was starting off fresh, mm -hmm. it was in the same world. So yeah. yeah, and especially since you had the experience already, you knew your do's, your don'ts, what what to play on, what to back yeah. off, pull back on. A bit. Yeah, absolutely. It wasn't like I was creating a whole new world. Mm -hmm. In a sense, I was, but not completely, entirely like a whole new world because it's still the same world as GCP. So. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now, I know I might be getting a little ahead of myself, <laughs> but is there a possible book three maybe people could look <laughs> forward to? Or right now, let's just focus on the second one and see where that takes us. I'm currently, currently I'm working on uh, book three. Oh, wow. For New Watchers. Okay. So, yeah. So, the third book would be the second book for New Watchers. Okay. So, That's yeah. pretty cool. So, we got to... Keep our eyes out. Yeah, and I, one of the things I wanted to do was dive into the, each kingdom, mm -hmm. so I know that uh, 
The second book for the new watchers wouldn't be on Selena, but it would be one of her friends. So each book you'll see different character. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Each so that way you dive into each different worlds of kingdoms that they battle. And I can see the youthful audience, the young audience, easily falling into a favorite character. Especially yeah. if you have a separate book for each, I can easily yeah. see them falling for one after the other after the other. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, before we leave, I have to ask you, where can people find? Please let them know where they can find your first book, your second book, all your books. Where can they find to purchase, to read, and enjoy? Um, well, you can go on Amazon or Barnes & Noble, anywhere online, Apple Books, and, or, um, or even to my website, francecharles.com, okay. where you'll find copies you can also order as well. Nice. Yeah. Now, do we have any upcoming book signings or yes. events coming up? So I, I am having a book signing mm -hmm. in uh, Barnes & Noble and Route 22 Union. Okay. This would be November 19th uh, from 2 to 3 p.m. Okay. So yeah. everybody look out November 19th from 2 to 3 p.m. Yes. Barnes & Noble's on Route 22. And then anything else or they should look out on social media for upcoming dates. Yes, you can find me on Instagram, France P. Charles. Okay. And that's where you'll find me with more updates on what I'm doing and events I have planned. So, yeah. That's amazing. Well, anything else you want to share with our audience here today? Because I know they love listening. Uh, um, I would say um, whatever you want to do in life, um, take the time to plan on it and work on it and move with wisdom. Take... Um, Educated when wise risk and not just reckless risk, but um, take take those chances while you still do. And despite what people may say or your age, try to do your best in this thing called life because it's a roller coaster. It's never easy, but do what you love because when you get older and when you look back, you won't regret it. Definitely. Yeah. Well, everyone, you heard Charles. When life hands you lemons, you make lemonade. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much once again for joining us. It was a pleasure having you here today. Right, thank you. And thank you, everyone at home, for watching. I'm your host, Edith Thomas, and I always welcome you back to sit down and enjoy talking with Edith. It's been great, and I'll see you all next time.